Should easily win. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this next event Chuck is sanctioned Cole. by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Art Lurie, Chairman. The a referee assigned by the commission, Mills Lane. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. Introducing, in the blue corner, fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing in at an even 200 pounds. He has a professional record of 10 wins, no defeats, with six knockouts. Here is the undefeated, Marvis. Frazier. So in British conversion, that's 14 stone, four pounds. And in the red corner, from Easton, Pennsylvania, weighing 219 pounds. He too is undefeated in his professional career with 44 wins, no defeats, 31 knockouts. He is undefeated, ladies and gentlemen, the WBC. Heavyweight champion of the world, Larry Hall. 219 pounds, 15 stone, nine holes. That's uh, four pounds lighter than his last fight. But when he fought Jerry Cooney, he came in at 15 stone, two and a half. Okay, Larry. So the final the rundown. The in the dressing room. Any questions from Mr. Frazier's corner? Any questions from Mr. Holmes' corner? Okay, let's get it on. Well, that's fighting talk, isn't it? Let's get it on. I've never heard that one before. And that's Larry Holmes' wife. So there, a chance or not for Marvis Frazier. Is he in above his head? with only 10 fights, or is the old man Joe Frazier shrewd to have put him in and take his chance? After all, Joe Frazier knows Larry Holmes backwards as he boxed with him when he was the world champion. And Frazier, of course, with only 10 fights, but has been around the hard-bitten gymnasiums of the world, boxed in the top American. Just look at this for a show-off at the start then by Marvis Frazier, trying to show contempt for Holmes remember at 34 years of age there are occasions when heavyweights come apart at the seams overnight well I'm wondering is this really the night or not I would suspect that those trunks that Fraser's wearing were his father's they were certainly the same color that Joe wore when he fought Ali a little bit of jeering from the crowd there because there was a wrestling throw coming from Holmes Reminding clip around the ear there from the champion to uh, tell the youngster don't come too strong in the opening round. Joe Fraser was telling me that his boy's got to fight three minutes every round. By that he means he's got to pitch in punches and try and slow Holmes down, who he reckons is now reduced to spasms of punching during the round to save his strength. Really, off, you have to say, there's no substitute for experience. She bangs that left hand in, probably the best left hand punch since the great Joe Lewis. Well, last time up, of course, Frazier was in with Joe Bugner. And you know, he beat the big fellow there out of sight in Atlantic City, he didn't have him down. Oh, the long right hand, well, look at that. He's been down as an amateur, Marvis Fraser, but it's the first time as a pro. He's not in control of his legs. He measured that right hand, and there's the father wondering what he can say, what can he say, but look out, here he comes with the next punch. And he really could do with those seconds ticking away faster than ever in the opening round. He shouldn't have dropped his hands, and Holmes warned everybody that he would have to put the kid in his place. And it looks as though this could be the mismatch that many people thought it was. Really putting Gun Frazier in trouble there. Will he get over this first round? The gun shield comes flying out. Bill Slane, the referee, hopefully giving him every chance, but it's all one way now. And he stopped it in the opening round. We just 
A few seconds to go, three seconds probably, to the end of the first round. There's Holmes and Wyver, there's Joe saying to the son, OK, kid, I know what that's all about. It's happened to me, but of course never as quickly as that. And there's no doubt that the father's judgment was in serious doubt there and obviously very wrong because this is how Holmes said he would have to deal. He said, I was brought up with this kid in the gym. I'm going to get no pleasure out of beating him up. And it looks a very moving moment there between fighters. And considering he got about two and a half million dollars for that, Holmes, there was a wor worry, of course, whether Frazier was unable to, able to absorb a punch. He once had an operation for a pinched nerve in the neck, which left a hefty scar. He was knocked out as an amateur by James Broad, whom he subsequently defeated as a pro. But really, he took enough punishment in that opening round to have lasted him a long time, and perhaps it's just as well that he didn't have to go on taking it for more rounds. 45 wins on the turn and an unusual non-title one but of course had Holmes lost the championship it would have been declared vacant well jumping from Joe Bugner to Larry Holmes for Fraser was a little bit too much to ask wasn't it it really was there was a time when I thought that he just might get out there and hustle a little bit certainly early on but Holmes had warmed up in Ladies the and and watched him sweating coming referee the Referee Mills Lane scuffs the bell. And he was about. ready to go to work. At the referee, two minutes, who's a district attorney seconds in uh, Reno, the Nevada, round, the winner allowed him to take enough punishment, I thought, but then the rightly world, stopped it. Larry Holmes. First time I've ever seen Larry Holmes' wife get in the ring, and there is, there really is the c consolation there. Well, he's also got $650,000 to take home with him, young Frazier. But I would have thought it probably ends the serious challenge that he has at a heavyweight. He is, after all, 23, which is no baby uh, in this division. When you think that Floyd Patterson became world champion at 21, and Muhammad Ali at just 22. There's the old veteran trainer, Eddie Futch, facing you there with the glasses. He's the man who looked after Joe Frazier, and uh, he said, I don't know why the old man's made this match for Marvis. It uh, looks to me as though he's moved in out of his class. And there was no way that Holmes was going to do any carrying. Well, that's unusual too. The world champion threw his uh, dressing gown and his shorts out among the press area. In fact, one of the Nevada commissioners has held on to that. So getting out the ring there, the Frazier family and uh, Joe Frazier, I must say, is uh, trying to keep on a very brave face. So over then to my colleague, Ferdy Pacheco, with the interview. I was sitting there from one of the greatest fighters of all time. He showed you that I'm who I'm supposed to be. I'm right now, I'm in my prime in my life. And the kid ain't ready, and he wasn't ready. And I'm just glad that I didn't hurt him. I was banging on him and... I saw I you look at the referee. Every time you hit him a right hand, you looked over like saying, you want more of this, and then you hit him again, and you looked at the referee again. I thought that was very humane of you. Well, the kid got a long way to go. Say the kid for another day. I want to say hi to my mom, hi to my daughters, Mr. and Lisa, and Belinda, and I love all of y'all. And I'll be seeing y'all tomorrow. I'm getting the hell out of here. <laughs> hey, bro, Larry, you did you think it was going to be this short? It looked like you were measuring him with the left jab and holding back the right hand. When you finally threw the right hand, you landed right on the butt. There's nobody can do anything with me now. I'm, I'm in the prime of my life. My weight is nice at 219, 220, 223. And I don't have to run from nobody anymore. And I got the power. I got the jab. I have the ability to think. I have the experience. So why should I have to worry about anybody? As far as not worrying about anybody, what are your plans for the future? I know you want another fight, hang and out. it doesn't make any difference to you. I'm coming to Miami and hang out with you for a week or so. That would be with nice. With my family. <laughs> and uh, 
I'm going to sit back and let everything come. But I don't want to go through this. I want a good fight. I don't want to hurt nobody. I, you know, it, it was, I, I just, I'm doing it because it's business. And I, I don't want to hurt nobody. And, well, and you, I almost did. No, getting somebody out in the, in the first round doesn't hurt anybody. It was a good fight. It's, uh, as a wrap-up, I would say that you have shown that you're still there. You're still Larry Holmes. And now we go back to Marv Albert. NBC is a knockout, Marv. Thank you. All right, the champion. Larry Holmes, who turned pro back in 1973, came on slowly, first working as a sparring partner for Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier, and maintaining his title with the victory here this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, the Eastern Assassin, Larry Holmes. Well, Larry Holmes has always been a good talker, and I'm sure he's not out of breath after that exercise. Over then to my colleague, Ferdy Pacheco. Let's hear what the champion says. So let's then have a look at the replays. The long right hand, you'd really almost telegraphed, and there was no way that Fraser could keep in control there. Just look at that. Made an effort to get up. Now here it is, he's measuring it, isn't he? Bang. The full length of the arm before he tagged him on the side of the jaw, and that punch must have gone from chin to boots. So from another angle now, you're, there he is. He's very square on Fraser. He's holding the arms too low, right through the middle, really like a lance. It was a devastating right-hand punch. So that's where he was waving the punches then at Fraser. A little bit of Ali show off there. And just clubbing him at will and calling the referee in Mills Lane and clipping him there, is, it, that really is back to the old Jack Johnson days, punishing his man and showing mercy at the same time. But he had to get on with the business, that's what the champions are all about. This really is a tough game. And it went on for me a dozen punches too long. And the district attorney referee from Nevada, there he is, and about time. So she's just palming Frazier off there and waving the right hand, doing as he wants, calling the referee. How about coming in and stopping this? A nice mercy touch there from Holmes, but he's got to get on with the business. He's still got to be the gunfighter. And Mills Lane is definitely late coming in here. And the kid's certainly brave enough, but that's not good enough in this business. Got a bit of the old man showing him there for the bravery, but it's all one-way traffic, as one-sided as a lynching, that one. <laughs> 